and welcome to Eye to Eye, Kansas City. Thank you for joining us on this latest edition. We got a lot of news stories and updates. Yes, I said updates to share with you right here on the broadcast today. And we're going to talk about issues of Camper Arena making either demolishing Camper Arena as we know it and making a small one. Uh, the current, I mean, the past uh, issue was tearing it down and making a campus for the camper, uh, I mean, not for the camper, but uh, American Royal. And the issue was the, how the cost would be shared. We'll talk more on the redevelopment of this store. And we'll talk about black on black crime on Kansas City streets, the statistics, and what's going on. And what community leaders say has to change. And of course, we'll talk about a final report that was released. And this is an update that we have for you. A final report coming from the advisory board of the mayor of Kansas City. Uh, we'll tell you what this uh, not so surprised, not so surprising uh, report has and the fight over homelessness in Kansas City was a big one we have an update on that particular story and the latest developments and Clay Chastain is making himself reappear again and he says that there's another legal battle with him being reappeared with him uh, appearing again We'll talk about him and a lot more right here on Eye to Eye, Kansas City. But before we get any further into our show, I want to give this reminder again. Some of you might know what I'm doing. Some of you might not. But if you are not a registered voter, just log on to kcmoresources.weebly.com. Again, that is kcmoresources.weebly.com. And that will help you get registered to vote as we are having elections coming up in August. And you can keep it right here on Eye to Eye, Kansas City, for the latest election results and uh, analysis here on the program. But what I want to turn your attention to is over a recent issue here in Kansas City. And this is the fight over home feeding the homeless. Now, this was, this was an uh, ordinance, a uh, proposed ordinance, rather, uh, from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Now, this would uh, make food suppliers get permits, and the, these permits c would cost around twenty-five to fifty dollars. And food would have to be served out of kitchens that were inspected by the city and were approved by the city, of course. Um, critics and those against this ordinance say that it would try to. It would try to uh, move away from God's work for the people. Now, if the ordinance did pass, excuse me, if the ordinance did pass, um, it would go into effect this November. But, however, here's the latest update on this particular story. There was a 66 vote that took place that killed the ordinance of, as latest that we've heard. Now, let's take a look at some statistics on the homeless. 600, 610,000 people, 10, 000, 10, uh, 610,000 people are homeless nightly. Uh, 65 65% are in homeless and or transitional housing and 35% are underneath the bridges and are outside not in shelters so that is just the uh, real perspective of what's going on and this is just our nationwide totals not Kansas City's totals by the way now what I want to turn your attention to is an update from KCI with the Mayor Advisory Board. Now, what we've told you last time was the recommendations of this advisory board, but what we are finding out is a final report, and that will be posted on, uh, well, we'll get to that here in just a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, this 100, this 180 page re uh, recommendation uh, says that the 
says uh, the three terminals do not provide the best service for residents and uh, travelers coming in and out of uh, KCI. Uh, a single terminal would be the best way to go for uh, travelers and would make things more efficient. Uh, there, and this report also uh, states that there is no correlation with ticket prices and the capital improvements. And if you want to know all about this report, we have it in a PDF file in its entirety, and it will be on i2ikc.com. Again, that is i2ikc.com, and just click on links on uh, think links on i2i if, if that's what we have it on uh, on the website. Okay, everyone. Now. What I want to move on to, if do we have enough time here? All right. What I want to move on to is um, black on black crime. Let's start there. Uh, many community leaders say that there is, there needs to be a new trend of change when it comes to black on black crime. Uh, it is a, a big cause of high unemployment, uh, lack of good education in the area and substandard education is also key contributors to black on black crime but community leaders say that it is time to change and push forward and get rid of get rid of crime excuse me out of black neighborhoods two out of three homicides homicide victims rather are black and the suspects happen to be black. Well, no sh stuff. I almost said something. Well, no stuff. So, you know, we have to really, uh, here's my commentary on this. You know, if the police department would stop trying to turn their naked eye and say, well, it's another black person we don't have to deal with. And, I mean, and that's the stigma of it. And if there's no trust from the police department for to the people, then what do the people want to believe in? Come on now. Doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You know, black on black crime has not been a new issue. It hasn't been an issue that was, you know, recently created. But uh, I can tell you that, you know, this here is an issue and it cannot be an issue that is continued to be ignored. And, you know, we have to push forward. We have to continue on fighting this. We got to come up, you know, layers. Me and Brandon Ellington talked about this a few years back about the, um, contribu the contributing, um, can't get it out, the, con uh, the uh, contributing, the uh, crimes that are contributing to uh, low performance in, in communities and what we talked about was educate the lack of education the lack of community involvement the lack you know these are issues that just aren't being addressed so you know what causes crime is low education and and in a a, uh, a, a revolving uh, of crimes happening with one criminal coming out of jail and then just doing the same thing over and over and then get right back in jail and doing the same most it's just a never ending cycle so what what needs to happen is that there needs to be a focus of education a focus of talking to young kids a focus of building up a neighborhood that's what, what we got to start doing but what we what I'm going to do is go ahead and when we come back on I2I Kansas City we got some more issues including uh Camper Arena and uh, Clay Chastain and we have an update coming from Jefferson City including our Governor Jay Nixon vetoing uh, some tax breaks. We'll talk about the specifics and a lot more right here on I2I Kansas City so don't go anywhere. We will return after this. 31,000 miles. That's more than once around the earth. That's also how many miles the Metro travels throughout metropolitan Kansas City every day. Hop on. We're going your way. The Metro. We're all on this ride together. 50 years of experience is what you get with Cotman Transmission and Total Auto Care. We have the experience you need and we always guarantee our work. I love these guys. They always take care of me. 
We don't start any repair until you approve our detailed estimate. I tell all my friends to go to Cotman. They've always been honest with me. Don't drive around with your check engine light on. Bring it to Cotman for a free electronic scan. So bring your vehicle to the team you can trust. Call Cotman Transmission and Total Auto Care, where it gets done today. Roosters? Everybody wants the biggest chicken breasts in fast food. And we mean everybody. Introducing the Big Chicken Sandwich, dusted in Southern Spices at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. You deserve better. Find it at Auto Start. Hey, no sales tricks. Just everyday low payments. A low payment you can live with today and tomorrow. Let's get you approved. Fresh starts start. At Auto Start US. Welcome back, everyone, here on I2I, Kansas City. And if you don't forget, if you don't remember, I2I, Kansas City, uh, I2IKC.com is always on for you. So if you want to get in touch with I2I, Kansas City, just log on to I2IKC.com. All right, everyone. All right, let's get into Clay Chastain for the 99th time here on this program. Uh, Clay Chastain is back with one of his plans, and he was caught shouting out to one of the uh, city council members from a little from a uh, city council meeting. Um, this man never gives up, does he? I give him that. <laughs> he doesn't give up. Uh, all right. Uh, he one of his plans might be on the ballot with the light rail and it might be an edited version that will be on the ballot um, but he has spent five years and 1.6 billion yes billion with a B billion dollars to uh, fight for his uh, initiatives light rail initiatives and he says that this legal challenge will be his last one. He says that he is tired of wasting the taxpayers' money. And, well, I think it's to the contrary. Because he's wasting the taxpayers on stupid, mm, stupid stuff. <laughs> A lot brighter than the last time I said it, huh? Uh, you know, what I, here's my commentary on Clay Chastain. Clay Chastain needs to understand that, you know, we already got a light rail system getting installed downtown. We cannot afford any more of his uh, initiatives. We cannot afford to really um, waste time. And he is just wasting more time, more effort in the city than anything else. So why don't he just, like I said, dig back in his hole and not to come back. Just to go back to his little hole and not to come back. I think Kansas City is getting tired of this issue. So what he needs to do, he just started this fight back in 2005, 2006 and he needs to just take his behind. Mm, excuse me, my voice is not really happening today. He needs to take his behind back to wherever he came from and don't come back. Just do not come back with any more light rail initiatives. Now, he said this last time, so I, I, I believe it when I see it. So, maybe in five years, maybe his ass ought to not come back and reappear. Maybe that's just how that one is. Well, we one shall see. I, I believe it when I see it. But let's go ahead and let's talk about a i to i k c poll now we asked you on our poll should mayor sly james be elect re-elected shall i say and the majority of you have said that he should be re-elected and there was a big possibility we asked you along those lines of that question there's probably not the exact but it's along the lines of that question and the majority of you said that yes he would be re-elected into another term once you'll see about that i, I think he will be re-elected and i'm gonna tell you why because he doesn't face that stigma that uh, mark funkhauser left a bowl of funk when he left <laughs> 
I hate to play again on this man's name, but I just couldn't help it. You know, he left a bowl of funk of issues uh, that wasn't so good with his with his. Um, I'm getting tongue tied today. I don't know why, bro, Brian. I don't know why my tongue is doing this today. Uh, but anyhow, he left a big bowl of issues that was from his wife and, and it just left a nasty image and I think Kansas City saw that and said we need some change we need a, a leader we need a visionary but I can only say with Mayor Sly James though is that he got to be involved not just in improvements and, and oh yeah we need light rail and oh yeah we need this and oh yeah then we've never gotten reports well look into it not just don't just go on PR mode and that's what he is all about is PR mode and, and I don't quite like that because you know it could also serve as a good thing but it also could serve as a bad thing so Mayor Sly James need to see his way on into um, being about uh, important issues not just dodging those issues, I think. So, now that we talked about Sly James and everything and, and that poll, and you could also go online, we're asking you something else. Should light rail be expanded in the, in the Kansas City metro area? You know, you already know how I felt from a past report recently here on I to I and how I feel about light rail and, and streetcar and whatever the hell it is. It doesn't serve a dog on purpose for Kansas City. It never has, nor will it. And the way that they're setting it up with different streets and, and, and Prospect and and Main and and other streets, it doesn't serve a purpose. And why are you going to put a tax that is the most restrictive to bringing people into the area? I don't get it. And that's Mayor Slide, you know, that's Miss Mayor, Mayor, the mayor wants to go along with this plan, but I'm not for it. If you're going to keep asking people on, on top of taxes, piling people with on taxes, beyond taxes, beyond taxes, well, the tax issue is going to get old. And I think the Kansas City people need to be wise and look at the ballot issue. And of course, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, we will have right here on I to I Kansas City. We will go over the issues that will be on the August ballot. And I do believe that the uh, light rail issue could be a main uh, issue, or the expansion of light rail and the component of taxing it, uh, funding it, will be on the ballot. And I think we need to look into it, and we will look into it here on I to I Kansas City. But we as people, as citizens that are going to vote need to look into it and need to ask questions of our mayor, need to ask questions of our city council about this particular uh, issue of the streetcar and light rail, whatever you want to call it. Um, but here's an update coming from Jay Nixon. Uh, Governor Jay Nixon vetoed 10 tax breaks here in Missouri. And those tax breaks were about uh, Restaurants, call and data centers, but lawmakers would have a can have a chance to uh, override those vetoes that Jay Nixon put out there. He, uh, Jay Nixon had said that uh, those uh, tax breaks would not bring in enough income to the uh, state. Now, what time do I got on the here? Okay, what I want to go back to real quickly is the issue of that uh, ordinance I think I think uh, uh, Kansas City Council members was really stupid on putting this on the ballot they were really I mean not on the ballot but on the table of issues to go over in, in uh, City Hall um, the fight against homelessness it's a serious one and I don't know why they decided to put this issue knowing that this had a you know this had a public outcry a lot of media including eye to eye was getting information that this was going to be a big issue um, what I found out though is that we have a lot of compassionate people here in Kansas City I'm just gonna take the bright side of this thing and make it as bright as we can at least it is not an ordinance and I'm glad that people 
that are good hearted, genuine, and are kind will continue to do the work that they are called to do. And it doesn't stop God's work. And it will never stop God's work. Because I know some people would do it on the slick side. And real quickly, we are going to talk about the 20-seat camper arena. Uh, there's a big talk, much to do about repurposing camper arena. There's a big move to push and demolish camper arena. And there's also plans with the uh, zoning committee to meet with business owners in the West Bottoms to uh, get some input on what should happen to Camp Arena. And we'll have more on this next time. I'll have my commentary on this next time as we are about out of time. But the only thing I can say is that uh, we need to pay off Camp Arena and there needs to be something without demolishing Camp Arena. That's all I can say. I won't do it next time. I'll just do it right here. But that wraps it up for us here on I2I Kansas City. I do thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you back here on Eye to Eye Kansas City. We're always on on Eye to Eye KC.com. Have a good day, everyone.